emergency room. This is Linda. That was EMS. They have a 50-year-old female with chest pain, ST elevation on the EKG. They're transmitting. Inferior lead, ST elevation. Okay. Go ahead and start our protocol. I'll call one call. STEMI alert to the emergency room. STEMI alert to the emergency room. Each year, hundreds of thousands of Americans have the most serious type of heart attack, known as an ST-elevated myocardial infarction, or STEMI, in which blood flow is completely blocked to a portion of the heart. Unless this blockage is eliminated quickly, the patient's health and life are at serious risk. Currently, around two-thirds of STEMI patients fail to receive the best available treatments to restore blood flow. Mission Lifeline seeks to save lives by closing the gaps that separate STEMI patients from timely access to appropriate treatments. Although Mission Lifeline is focused on improving the system of care for patients who suffer from a STEMI each year, improving that system will ultimately improve care for all heart attack patients. According to statistics provided by the Iowa Department of Public Health, cardiovascular diseases, including stroke, are the leading cause of death in Iowa. Heart attack and other ischemic heart disease is affecting approximately 90,000 Iowans right now. The overarching goal of Mission Lifeline STEMI is to reduce morbidity and mortality for STEMI and out-of-hospital cardiac arrest patients. We will improve their overall quality of care by performing pre-hospital 12 lead EKGs, transmitting them to the hospital, following statewide guidelines and providing education and data collection. Each piece of the system has a common goal. Get the patient emergency medical attention immediately and move the patient to a primary PCI center. In this video, the referral hospital will look at the ideal process for a patient arriving via EMS. We will discuss the patient that presents to the emergency department later in the video. Remember, first medical contact is the first trained healthcare provider able to assess and identify the signs and symptoms of a cardiac problem and start the system rolling. First medical contact will be staff at the hospital when the patient self presents. First medical contact to ECG time should be less than 10 minutes to provide the best opportunity for early identification of a STEMI heart attack. The system of care begins with the patient identifying signs and symptoms of a possible heart attack. Ideally, that person or someone with that person would call 911 and enter the emergency care system in that way. However, nationwide, our data shows that the majority of heart attack victims, especially in rural areas, drive themselves to the hospital. This happens for many reasons, denial, embarrassment, thinking they can get there faster than if they waited for an ambulance, or not wanting to bother people. What we as healthcare providers try to help people understand is that they actually get to definitive treatment safer and faster by almost 30 minutes if they enter the system via EMS, and they receive emergency treatment that can buy their heart muscle precious time while being transported to the PCI center or cath lab hospital. We've got jaw pain and shortness of breath on exertion. We've done a 12 lead showing uh, elevation and inferior leads with reciprocating changes. She's had four baby aspirin. We gave two nitro taps and legal. Four milligrams of morphine IV. Pain is about a six out of 10. Want to make sure your blood pressure is still doing okay before I give you that other nitro. Linda still shows in for your lead SD elevation. Okay. Thank Linda. you very much. Okay. Anything else we can get you? No, nope, I think we're good. Okay. Thank you. We've already called the helicopter. They're on their way. We're going to take very good care of you. Hi, Leanne. I'm Laura. I'm the nurse practitioner here in the emergency department. Can you tell me a little bit about what's going on today? I woke up this morning. I had some chest pain and I just thought, you know, it's going to go away. So I just laid there and then got up to go to work and it was still there and in my jaw was up there and decided I better call the ambulance. Okay. All right. I'm going to take a quick listen to your heart here. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. 
deep breath for me. Very good. Leanne, based off of your EKG and your symptoms that we've done here today, we've determined that you're having a STEMI heart attack, which means that one of your arteries in your heart is occluded. We need to transfer you as fast as possible to a hospital that has a cardiac cath lab. There they can perform procedures that will open up that vessel and return blood flow to that muscle, the heart muscle. And we need to do that as fast as possible, so we'll be transferring you in a helicopter. Do you have any other questions for me? Okay. Go ahead and continue following our protocol. Okay, Leanne, since we're sending you to the cath lab, we're going to need to give you some medicine to thin down your blood a little bit. You're not allergic to any medications, correct? Mm -hmm. This is a medication called Berlenta. Berlenta in. Okay. 180 milligrams. And then this is heparin, same purpose. Okay. 4,000 units of heparin going in now. Hey, what do you think about getting a second line in her? We probably should do that and then also get some Lipitor. Those are really good ideas, but I think I heard the bird, so we'll, we won't delay care for those. We'll let them decide if they want to give them in route. Okay. All right. Hi there. Hi. This is Leanne. I'm Linda. I'm Linda. I'm Jen. I'm Jen, nice I'm to meet you. This is a 50-year-old female. Um, chest pain on? onset about three hours ago, okay. but she does report that um, okay. she had some jaw pain overnight okay. and some shortness of breath with exertion. Um, no reports of diaphoresis. Anything else? No. If you just want to fax the lab when you get them. We will do that. EMS is also capable of transporting the patient safer and quicker than if they drove themselves. And most importantly, EMS can begin emergency treatment, saving cardiac muscle and providing resuscitation efforts if a patient should cardiac arrest. Whether BLS or ALS, you have the skills to acquire 12 EDCG. It should not delay scene time, but it puts the entire system of care into action. Once the STEMI is identified, the decision on how to get the patient to the PCI hospital must be made. Are you going to the closest hospital, or are you going straight to the PCI hospital? Will you tier with ALS transport or a helicopter? Dispatch centers play a key role in working with the person calling 911 for help, and are always striving for the best outcomes for each patient by partnering with EMS and the hospitals to overcome challenges in the system. The other pieces of the system are the non-PCI hospitals and PCI centers. Each have the goal of limiting time from first medical contact to device by limiting door in, door out times in the non-PCI hospital. Another common goal is to overlap transport services from rural areas provide fibrolytic therapy or clot busting drugs to qualified patients that cannot get to PCI in less than 120 minutes. Ultimately striving to get patients from first medical contact to device in less than 120 minutes when geographically possible. Every element within the system must work collaboratively to optimize the outcomes for STEMI patients. Interventional cardiologists from across the state of Iowa, working with Mission Lifeline, have developed a statewide guideline to assist non-PCI hospitals in the care and priorities of the STEMI patient. That guideline recommends a first medical contact to 12 lead ECG time of less than 10 minutes. STEMI heart attacks are at high risk for cardiac arrest. EMS can start resuscitation immediately so we never want a patient to drive themselves to the hospital. Next is a door in to door out goal of less than 30 minutes. When EMS recognizes a STEMI in the field, the referral hospital can have ALS or air transport on the way before EMS arrives, shortening the time the patient is at the referral hospital. This section lists patient care that can be completed, but only if time allows. Do not delay transport. There's a pathway for the patient that cannot get from first medical contact to primary PCI in under 120 minutes. 
That pathway includes the screening and administration of fibrinolytics. EMS, the referral hospital and PCI hospital, must collaborate to gain a better understanding of their responsibilities and role in the STEMI system of care. Okay, thank you very much. Laura, do you have a minute? So yeah, what's going on? That was the cath lab. They just called to let us know our patient's doing very well. Good. She had two stents placed and she's resting comfortably in the CCU. What did our door to EKG time look like? Well, because our paramedics did it when they arrived, we were at two minutes for door to EKG, well within our 10 minute goal. Good, great. great. How did our total times look? Our total times were great. They reported to me an 18 minute door to device time, which is really good. For our total times, we had a door to door time of 20 minutes, which is well within Wonderful. our 30 minute goal, which leaves us with a total first medical contact to device of 55 minutes. Great, so, which is why the patient Wonderful. did so well. Good job, team. The PCI centers in Iowa are collecting large amounts of data that span the entire system of care. This will enable hospitals to benchmark across the state. The Mission Lifeline task force and committees will allow for networking and the sharing of best practices across our state. It will be possible to watch the trends across Iowa to see the improvements we make. This data will also provide significant information that helps drive the science behind the guidelines that are also continually being updated and strengthened. Mission Lifeline goals save lives, improve outcomes, and restore health. Thank you for joining us today. You will find this video a good resource for your team.